guys, before we go any further in this video, I just want to give a couple shout outs here. So the first one's going to be to Misty Mountain Supply. He's a surplus store in BC, Canada, and he sells some pretty cool stuff, so make sure you check him out. And also want to shout out my friend Pepe the Frog for donating a lot of his personal rounds and his time, and also his filming skills in the making of this video. So thank you so much to those guys, and uh, enjoy the rest of the video. All right, so before we get into the review, let's uh, thank some people that helped us uh, come together. First off, it's Firearms Outlet Canada. Thank you so much for sending me this rifle and uh, 1,000 rounds of ammunition. I'd also like to thank uh, you guys as well for you know, checking out my video. And just wanted to say as well, full disclosure, I have no relationship with Black Creek Labs. I've met him before at TACOM. Uh, we did discuss this rifle when he was showing it off. Uh, we were supposed to do a range day, but uh, it never ended up coming to fruition. So this rifle is not handpicked by BCL. It was sent to me from FOC. It's uh, just a run of the mill gun, which gives me a better idea of how these things will actually run in the wild. So let's get started. So, quick overview. This is a 223 Wild chambered firearm. So, 223 Wild is in between a 556 chambering and 223. It's like the best of both worlds, apparently. Um, it has an 18.6 inch barrel. It is a AR 18 styled rifle. I don't know if it actually is classified as that, but it does have a lot of AR uh, 18 features, pretty much all of them. It takes AR 15 magazines, triggers, grips. Uh, also this here, the uh, trigger guard, you can get the AR-15 upgraded ones. It comes with a Zukov stock, which is a Magpul product, which is a foldy boy. But we did have some issues shooting it folded, but I have seen footage of it successfully being shot folded, so it's not all over yet, boys. It is optics ready, as you can see. You have a pick rail all the way from the rear of the receiver to the end of the rail. You have M-Lock slots as well on the handguard. It does come with a mil-spec AR-15 trigger, but I decided to put my uh, Geisley trigger in it instead for this review. And lastly, it's made in Canada. I'm gonna go into my pros and cons list. This is all anecdotal evidence from my experience shooting this gun. So for the pros list, we'll go there first. It has acceptable accuracy. I was getting around one and a half to three inches of groups, depending on the different ammunition that we shot. We shot uh, a bunch of different uh, types of ammo. We shot Barnall, PMC, uh, Federal, American Eagle, all that stuff. We shot a whole bunch of different ammo. We also shot Hornady uh, 75 grain black hollow points. And it seemed to run everything fine. And it also seemed to have, you know, an acceptable range of accuracy. This is not a tack driver. It's not really meant to be, but uh, it definitely is acceptable. It has M lock, which is nice. So yeah, you have tons of uh, options for accessories. Another thing I really noticed and I do appreciate is on the rail itself, the QD mount is uh, extended. So it does have a fairly uh, thick profiled barrel and that can be an issue sometimes with mounting your sling. If the barrel's too thick, then your sling will not go in, but they were smart and made them extended. So you can still mount your slings, your QD slings to the uh, rail here. At the back of the receiver here, there's a 1913 rail. So you can put like SIG stocks and stuff like that. They've made an adapter, which then holds the Zukov stock, which is obviously if that's what you like, that's great. But if you do want to upgrade to a 1913 style stock, you can do that. It takes AR-15 uh, triggers, which is nice. Uh, like I said, this is a Geisley trigger and it had no issues that the pins didn't fall out or anything. It just seemed to work and it ran the whole entire time. The ergonomics are also really good. Um, you have your AR-15 safety. So obviously this gun is empty and clear, but you do have your AR-15 safety, which is ambidextrous. Like I said, you have your AR-15 trigger, the, um, the AR-15 trigger guard, AR-15 grips, magazine release, and then I believe this is their own proprietary bolt release. I'm not sure if anyone else uses it, but it's also a very nice way to, uh, you know, when you load your gun, you can just put your mag in, move your finger up off the magazine release. Okay. I really like that. It's very forward thinking. A lot of the uh, Canadian made AR-180s have terrible ergonomics, especially when it comes to the bolt release. You know, you have to like reach back with your thumb or just have to pull the charging handle back, which you obviously can do with this one too. You can just pull the charging handle back. But I just found it was very, very quick to use this bolt release, or you also could use the traditional AR-15 style bolt release, which is the paddle right here. 
No, you can close your bolt. Very good job. It's Canadian made, which is great. You know, we should be supporting our own uh, industries and stuff like that. So it's good to see that Canadians are stepping up to the plate to make guns for us. You know, it's been obviously pretty hard times since the bands of 2020. And you can even go back to say the bands of the 90s as well that really, really ruined a lot of uh, Canadian <coughs> sports shooting and uh, uh, gun culture. But, you know, thank you so much that these Canadian companies are stepping up to make these guns. It has a gas system that seems to work. Okay, there's been a lot of issues with like the MCR and the WKs that their gas systems like to go explodey boy and that's not really cool. And they haven't really seemed to care to fix that issue. They just kind of send you a new one. That's the same exact problem. Uh, BCL definitely copied the uh, Air 180 style of gas system. And it's like a, a cup with, you know, the full shoulder thing that goes up. No, I'm just kidding. It's like a, a piston cup with a, uh, like an actuating rod, I guess I'd say, or I don't know, I'm saying it all wrong. That's okay but it does seem to work. Like we had no issues. There's no bending that I checked. The only issue that I saw, which it says in the manual, so it is my fault. They said every, after every 1500 rounds or so, you're supposed to take your gas system apart and clean it. I didn't do that. So now the screw that is in there is now permanently in there. So up next is how they encaptured the springs. So on the MCR and the WK 180 and the Crusader Arms Templar, their springs just are not encaptured at all. They just kind of fly out of the gun when you go to take it apart if you're not careful. This way they actually, you know, have it locked in place and when you put it into the gun and have it lined up properly, there we go, there. So when it sits in the gun, it's flush. As you can see here, it's not sticking out. You don't have to like, you know, it just goes together, pin in and it's done which makes it a lot easier. It's definitely forward thinking and a lot smarter. How the upper and lower mount together is the best so far in Canada for the AR-180s. It's not uh, like some sort of springed plate that goes into the back of the, uh, the lower receiver. It's just two takedown pins. So it's very easy to take apart. Like I said, you don't have to worry about these springs shooting out of the gun unless you have the action pulled back, I guess, but it's probably gonna go forward before you do that. But yeah, just these two pins here. So the one at the front, one at the back. And of course, doing it on camera, it's not gonna work. But that's okay, you can just believe me. The overall anodizing on this gun is done very, very well. It looks very, very good. This is definitely the best looking uh, and most futuristic looking AR-180 in Canada of the Canadian made variants. Like the MCR and the WK-180s, they kind of brought us to like the 1980s of technology of guns. The Crusader Templar brought us to like 2007 with like that kind of ACR look. This brings us into the 2010s i'd say for technology wise of and also looks so they are slowly making it there to 2023 maybe it will happen this year we will find out and the last pro is it seems to work okay we put 2600 rounds to this it was a thousand rounds of bar knowledge a steel case it, ran, it chewed through everything um there was some slight issues but it, for the overall working of the gun it did work fairly good that's another pro and the last pro i have of my anecdotal evidence All right, we're gonna do a quick little dirt test here. If we can even get dirt here. It's pretty dirty. Let's see. Turn the handle. Alrighty, let's see if she runs. <laughs> That's pretty caked in there. Alrighty, here she goes. It chewed through that, we'll put a little more dirt. It's a good sign. Again, this is not really a realistic test because you know, obviously if your gun's jammed up like this, you did something really, really wrong, but we'll give it a little bit of a challenge to see if it runs. Okay. Okay, so we got a stoppage there. So we're just gonna pull that out of the way. Okay, we had a failure to extract. We also have a round coming up here. There we go. The mag back in.
Okay, it ran dry. We'll flip the mag around. See the charging hand still works. Okay, we're not in battery. Okay, not the battery here. Okay, we're under. We're in battery. Okay, so we have one malfunction or two malfunctions there, I guess. Failure to extract and failure to feed or failure to go into battery. Okay, dirt it up again. Okay, it didn't go into battery there. So not in battery. It's getting really, really sluggy here. Okay. So again, didn't go into battery. And that was the last round. Okay, it does lock back. Okay, we won't add any, any more dirt. We'll just see if it runs now. It's in battery. Okay, it's a good sign. And this is the last 10 rounds, actually, of the review, which is, uh, you know, let's be crossing the 2600 round mark. So we'll get a little more dirt. See how she does. Okay, again, didn't go into battery. Okay, so it's still in the chamber there. Around. There we go, okay, extracted it. Okay, not going into battery here again. My finger got in the way there. There we go. Okay, we'll just load up the mag with all the dirty rounds here. Oh, I guess we still got 10 here too. These are some dirty, nasty looking rounds. There's a lot of dirt on them. All right, okay. She doesn't want to go into battery. There we go. Alrighty, and we got 10 more here. See if the bolt release still works. Yep. Okay, we got two more rounds here. Let's see if she chews through it. It is absolutely disgusting in there. <laughs> Megs barely want to go in. See, the bolt release still works again. 
It's in battery. Last two rounds of the review. So the first con is there's no stock muzzle device. I threw this A1 on, but it just comes with a barrel uh, thread protector, which is whatever. I guess it's nice if you want to put your own custom one on, but if you just wanted to buy this out of the box and have performance, it'd be nice to have an A2 birdcage or an A1 like here, just so you have something that's not just a, a thread protector. The next con is uh, the, just the barrel profile. Again, the Canadian made 180s really like to lean towards a heavier profile barrel. In my opinion, it needs to be lighter. Again, I don't know if it's because they don't have the technology to make proper pencil barrels with the heat treating, because with a pencil barrel, if, you, if it gets hot, it will um, affect the grouping size. So I don't know if that's the issue here, if they need to upgrade their rifling or their heat treating process, I don't know. But anyways, like I said, it just needs to be a little bit lighter because it just adds front heaviness that doesn't need to be there. We already have 18.6 inches of barrel that we have to deal with because of the government. It just sucks even more when it's really thick. And again, this one's not terrible, but again, it could be a lot smaller and save you a couple pounds, or at least not a couple pounds, but save you some weight. The next con is the handguard. I think the handguard looks very well, but I think it was made for looks and not actual function. We found when you'd shoot about 70 rounds uh, in a row, it would get so hot that you could not touch it with a, without a glove on. Like it would definitely burn your hand. And as you can see with science, heat goes up and there's no ventilation that goes up on this handguard at all, okay? So the handguard is definitely a con. Um, also too here, they uh, made this like little area that's like scalloped out for your hand to go, which is, I guess, looks cool. But now you can't put M-Lock here. You can't put M-Lock here. That, that goes on, that takes up two uh, spaces of M-Lock. Okay, because then it would not sit straight. The uh, piston, again, like I said, it works, but there's no return spring. So it actually just sits in there loose. And you, you can probably hear that. That's the piston going back and forth. There is no return spring. Like I said, it seemed to work but it'd be nice to have a return spring so you don't have that issue anymore of the, of the noise. So upon finishing uh, 2,600 plus rounds on this gun for this review, I took it apart and cleaned it. I just noticed that the bolt is missing basically most of its coating on the front. There was some rust developing in the firing pin hole. There's also chips on the corner of the bolt. There is burrs all over the bolt now. So the bolt itself definitely needs some work. I don't know if it's, whether gonna, if it's gonna be um, better heat treating or better materials used. All obviously needs a better coating that's a little bit tougher, but uh, that's definitely another con that's going on here. On the bolt carrier group itself, the retaining pin for the firing pin is terrible and it's constantly falling out of the gun. It, that needs to be replaced. It's a cool looking pin, I will give them that, but it doesn't seem to work, so we need to get rid of it. Up next is the charging handle uh, for a con. Like it does work, we didn't have any issues with it not functioning, but uh, with it just sticking out like that, I found one, it's just a little bit too small for your hand to actually really get on it, but, and two, it should be actually folding. Okay, because when you have it like that, it sticks into your back, when you, if you have it slung. The uh, magwell seemed to have some over-insertion issues. So with this Lancer mag right now, it does not seem to have the over-insertion issue, right? It's, it's actually working pretty good. The over-insertion issues seem to be with Gen 1 and Gen 2 cross mags, but it does not seem to be the issue with um, Lancer mags, but there is some other AR-15 mags that had over-insertion issues, which seems to be a problem. So something needs to be done about that. This gun has a very sleek design, but with how sleek it is, it actually kind of makes it a little bit awkward for mounting optics. It's very, very low, especially compared to like the standard of an AR-15. Um, so I did have to use a riser. I do usually use risers anyways, especially if I'm using nods, but you definitely do need to have a riser just to have that more comfortable cheek weld. It's my con because I, ex I experienced it, but uh, you can't shoot with the stock folded. I have seen videos of people do it. So like I said, it is just my con with my anecdotal evidence. But as you can see, it, there's not very much room there. Like obviously the stock needs to go on a bit of an angle. And as you can see here, it's not really designed to do that. This is designed for AK-47s, not for AR-18s. The next con is the quality control concerns. Um, there's been a lot set online. You can read it anywhere on the, the forums. There's been a lot of issues with these. That's another con. And last but not least is definitely the price. I think they are, they are a little bit pricey for what you get. Uh, they're about $1,600, $1,700. That's a little bit of a con, especially if you're running into issues with QC. That shouldn't be a problem at that price.
Unfortunately, if you're looking for good news, I'm not bearing it today. I do not suggest buying one of these until they fix the issues with the bolt, especially with the bolt, just because of safety concerns. I'm not gonna be shooting this gun anymore. Most likely we'll be sending it either back to FOC or sending it to uh, BCL for warranty just because that bolt is really sketching me out. I don't feel like having another explosion in my face. The handguard is a secondary issue, I'd say, um, especially, or even like all the other issues are definitely secondary. The most important thing they have to do is make sure this gun actually runs and consistently, and that's gonna be within the bolt, the magazine well, the gas system. That's what needs to be done first. The barrel profile, the handguard could all be secondary issues. So the first thing that I thought of, and again, you can make fun of it or disagree, is I think this thing would be really cool with an AR-15 charging handle. It would, all, it would bring the scope mount up and then also get rid of this. I'm not really a big fan of side chargers. I just like the old school AR-15 charging handle. Um, that's just one of my ideas. Or instead of a uh, AR-15 charging handle, just an upgraded uh, side charging handle that folds, so then it just gets out of the way and just a little bit longer as well, so you can get more than just one finger on it. I'd like to see it come stock with an A2 flash hider, just that's one less thing you have to buy when you buy a gun that's kind of annoying, if you, especially if you don't realize it, then you have to go buy something else. You have to wait for it to ship to your house or go to the gun store. It'd just be nice to have some sort of muzzle device at the end, some sort of flash hider, uh, preferably. I'd like to see a dust cover added to this gun, just because there's a huge gap between the um, the bolt in the, the upper receiver, which a lot of dirt can get inside of, which can get, then get inside your magazine and stuff like that. It'd be nice to have a dust cover, then that wouldn't be an issue anymore, then, if, then it's up to you. So you could just close it yourself while you're on the move or hunting or whatever you're doing. And the handguard. Like I said, there's no ventilation at the top, so it's not allowing any of the heat to get out of there easily. So it leaves you with a burnt hand if you're not careful. Maybe shoot a lot of rounds quickly, which I get with can. It takes a while because you have our five round mags or our 10 round pistol mags. But, uh, be nice, even if they just did M-Lock on the top here, then it's functional and it also will allow uh, ventilation. Um, get rid of this little cutout here, like just save some time in machining, get rid of that. And also have these vents all the way down too, just so it allows more air to get sucked in from the bottom that's cold, let the hot air leave, and it's not gonna get so freaking hot so quickly. It would also be nice on these screws here on the, on the handguard as well, just to add a little bit of blue Loctite from the factory because they do come loose very easily. I'd like to see a lighter barrel profile just because this one's a little bit heavy. Like this is definitely the lightest AR-180 that's Canada's produced, like a Canadian company that has produced, but it definitely could be a lot lighter with uh, upgrading the handguard and especially taking some meat off the barrel. I'd like to see a return spring on the piston, because like I said, it shakes around and makes noise. It'd be nice just to have a return spring so it always stays in the right position until you're firing and it's doing its job. I'd like to see better coating on all steel. Like I said, the anodizing, they did a very good job. It looks very good, but on all the steel inside this gun, it definitely needs a better coating. I'd also say too that as much as nice as this uh, magazine release is, I think a stock one would work just fine. There has been issues with the uh, that screw coming out and getting stripped and getting wrecked and then it just completely shuts your gun down. So it'd just be nice just to have a normal magazine release just to get rid of all those issues. And most importantly, the quality control concerns. That's what I'd like to see change as well. I get that uh, BCL has been stuck in many situations like with their BCL Coyotes, and now with these guns with uh, legislation changing that they, that they get stuck with you know, a stockpile of uh, inventory. So I'm assuming that they just kind of shove these things out the door just to get them out of the shop to make some money and also to get guns in our hands. Like obviously it's respectful and it's based. I'm glad that you guys are making guns in Canada so we can still have semi-automatic rifles. But uh, it would be nice just to fix those quality control concerns. That's the biggest thing with machining is you have to have good quality control. And I know just from experience of my own bad quality control that it sucks to deal with, but you have to do it. I just wanted to say too, I'm not making this video to hate on this gun. I do want to see it actually perform to its perfection. I think this gun has a lot of potential and has just some small issues that need to be fixed and it will be a, an amazing gun. And I just want to say too, like a lot of people shot this gun during my review. I had a lot of people come out and just try because they're so, like Canadians are so desperate for a good gun. And all of the opinions were positive in shooting. Like, they, like it's a very great gun that has uh, minimal recoil. It seems to work, but it has just some small issues that need to be fixed. And once they're fixed, it'll be an amazing gun and definitely the best gun in Canada. And that's why I made this video because I want to 
hold BCL accountable, and I also want to give them constructive uh, criticism. So they can watch this video and go, oh, this guy's a, a jerk, like I'm not listening to what he has to say. Or they can just be like, hey, you know what, like the customer is, the customer base is saying this, we need to fix this problem, right? And that's all I want to see. They, if they fix the, the small issues on this gun, like I said, it'll be a perfect gun, it will run great. Like this one has the issues and it still ran great. So it's within your reach, BCL, take it. Well, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have anything you wanted to add or things that you thought maybe I missed, just add it to the comment section. I appreciate you guys watching this. I uh, just want to say, make sure you check out Firearms Outlet Canada for all your gun stuff needs for ammunition, guns, gear, they have it all. Um, I also want to say too, thank you as well to Canadian Multigun because he's also doing a review on these on the Siberian. He does a 10,000 round endurance test for uh, different Canadian made guns to try to help the manufacturers figure out what's going on here with their quality control and stuff like that. So check out his stuff too, Canadian Multigun on Instagram. And uh, yeah, have a good one.